I'm excited to be able to take a few minutes and share my personal story with my encounter with the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Um, I was in my early 20s and was very faithful to my church. I grew up Roman Catholic and still was faithful to my Catholic church. I was at mass every week, uh, took part in all these special holy days and actually uh, actually served in a, in a leadership capacity within my church. But there was an emptiness that I was feeling. My uh, heart just I, somehow or other, and I now know it was the Holy Spirit, but I knew that there must be something more. I didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus. So I made a phone call to our church, and uh, or just some people I knew in the church, actually, and asked, are there any Bible studies, meeting? Uh, I'd like to get involved in something like that. My thought was that as I studied the Bible, maybe I would uh, learn more about God and fill this emptiness in my heart. It just so happened that there was a Bible study that was meeting. This one was meeting at nine o'clock on Tuesday mornings, which worked perfect for me because currently I was working an afternoon shift. I was working three to 11 p.m. And so I contacted the individual who was hosting this and found out that it was four or five other ladies who met on Tuesday mornings at nine o'clock. I would be the only guy, but it was what was available at that time of morning. And so uh, I went to a Bible study and I grabbed a Bible that was laying around on a shelf someplace. And when I got there, I met four wonderful uh, ladies. Uh, some were much older than I was. Uh, they were in their 50s. And then there were others that were in their 30s. I was the youngest one. I was in my 20s. But I uh, got together with them and they uh, shared about the Bible. Somebody led in a lesson. We had a prayer time. But it was very obvious to me within the first week, maybe second week, that there was something different about these ladies. The way that they spoke about God, the way that they spoke about Jesus, the uh, way that they understood the Bible was totally different than anything that I had known before. I now know that they had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, something I did not have, but that wasn't a term that we used in the Catholic Church. And so I didn't know what it was, but I found myself hungering for it and intrigued with it. As I attended and as, you know, we had discussion and question and answered, uh, answer times, it was apparent, and I think apparent to the ladies, that I had not yet opened my heart to Jesus. I did not have a personal relationship with him. And they explained that just doing the good works that we were suggested, in fact, required to do within the Catholic Church, did not put us in right relationship with God, that we, I needed what they had, a personal relationship with Jesus. I needed to become born again, a term I had never heard before. Again, intrigued by that, but I had uh, noticed in their life there was something different about them, and there was something very attractive about the relationship that they had with God. So, I continued to attend, and they shared from the scriptures what the Bible says about my need for repentance and the forgiveness of sins, which I thought I had the forgiveness of sins, for I would go to confession occasionally, but then they explained that I needed to open my heart to Jesus. Well, one September afternoon, back at my home, not there at the Bible study, but back at my home, I remember sitting down and praying a prayer. And I said, Jesus, I want what these individuals have. I desire this. They say, I need a personal relationship with you, Jesus. And so I give you my life. I open my heart to you. And he did exactly what he said he was going to do. He saved me. Now, I didn't feel anything particularly strong that time, but there was a sense of God's presence and over the next day or two, I could tell that I was different, but it became very apparent to me one morning as I was driving to work a week or so later, uh, the fall colors had started to change. I had noticed that my life seemed lighter. I was a bit happier. I didn't seem as uh, down on the edge of depression. But as I was driving to work that morning, I had never seen fall colors that were as vibrant and as beautiful. It was like the world changed. And I began to realize that, no, the world hadn't changed. I had changed. 
God had come to live within me. I truly was what was being described as born again or saved. And I also recognized that my heart was not as heavy. God did truly come in. He forgave me of my sins. This was an exciting time for me. Oh, my life was being transformed and I could sense it happening deep within. And the interesting thing was family members were also picking up some changes in me that whatever was happening inside was reflected outside. This group, however, had something else that I didn't have. And I was already becoming a little familiar with it because sometimes during our prayer time, some of these ladies would actually pray for needs, sometimes even pray for me, and they were not speaking English. They were praying in some type of uh, language that I'd never heard before. Initially, I thought maybe they had grown up in a foreign country, but they began to explain this to me also as praying in tongues. Well, I was vaguely familiar with praying in tongues because as uh, I attended the Catholic Church, we celebrated Pentecost on Pentecost Sunday, and we read the story of uh, the time that the apostles were first baptized in the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues. So I was vaguely familiar with it, but I didn't know anything like that happened today. So again, I started on a learning curve, and they uh, showed me in the Bible where uh, it talked about these things, and I read those biblical passages, and I asked a lot of questions. And the ladies were very patient with me. And in fact, more than patient, I think they were excited. They were excited that here was someone who deeply desired the things of God. Well, I started to read the scripture and I was hungering for this. I had just been born again, but I knew that there was something more because they had something I didn't have. They had what they called the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And so uh, after reading some scripture and thinking about it, I came back one Tuesday and I said, I, I, I would like this thing too. How do I get it? I said, well, let us pray for you. And so we would occasionally pray for people by having them sit in the middle of the group. Individuals would surround us and lay hands on us and they would pray. And so I got in the middle and they laid their hands on me and they began to pray. And I said, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me in your Holy Spirit. And they were surrounding me and they were praying in tongues and I was waiting for something to happen. I didn't feel anything. And they said, just, just open your mouth. You can pray in the spirit, pray in tongues. And that didn't happen either. And so I was a little disappointed, but they just kept praying and they said, keep seeking, keep seeking, keep seeking. And nothing happened. And so I was prayed for. And then individuals began to share with me their own experiences. And I could remember a couple, but one in particular is one lady said when she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it was like she was overwhelmed with, surrounded by waves of the Spirit pouring over her. And, and tears came to her eyes and she just started praying in tongues, speaking in other tongues. And wow, that sounded incredible. So I thought, well, why didn't that happen to me? And they said, well, just, just keep seeking. Someone else shared their story and it talked uh, very similar. They had this, this incredible experience. So I thought, well, okay, what's wrong with me? Um, and so I left that week and I went home and I read some more of the scripture and came back the next week and said, well, um, nothing's happened yet. Pray for me again. And so they prayed for me again and uh, they prayed maybe a little louder and a little more fervently. And I sought a little more fervently and still nothing happened. Uh, but they, they were so encouraging. They said, just keep seeking. And they shared, you know, uh, on the day of uh, after Jesus left before Pentecost, they waited uh, in that upper room for days before they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. So just keep waiting, just keep seeking. And then one of them made this suggestion, say, you know, maybe God wants for you to receive it by yourself and shared a story about them receiving it by themselves and how they experienced the Holy Spirit. So I began to seek personally. I began to seek privately, just seeking God. And I sought for another week and another week. And I, I will be honest, I was getting quite frustrated. Uh, what's wrong with me, God? Why can't I receive this? These ladies have received it. And they shared stories upon stories of others, of their friends and acquaintances. And then they, they, read, uh, they sh took me to some books. And uh, I was able to read about other people who had received it. So it, it was very common, but I wasn't getting it. I thought, what is wrong with me? I mean, I sought my heart. Is there any hidden sin? Was I really born again? And, but I wasn't receiving and could never speak in tongues. Just couldn't. Then I read in 1 Corinthians where it says, not all speak in tongues, do they? 
course, the answer to that is, well, no, they don't all speak in tongues. I did not understand that it was speaking of a, a spiritual gift of tongues that is given for a, uh, a, a message that comes in a, in a meeting, a public meeting, that wasn't talking about a prayer language in tongues. But so I went back and I said, well, probably it's not for me. Tongues isn't for me because uh, the Bible says this. And they said, oh, Rick, no, just, just keep seeking. I said, but maybe I'm one that isn't supposed to receive this. And they were so encouraging. And I didn't know at that time, I just knew that they were encouraging me. I didn't know at that time that the Bible does say that this is a gift available for all people. In fact, I really explained that this past Sunday. And if you haven't listened to my Sunday message, Immersed in the Holy Spirit, I'd encourage you to go back and listen to that message. Uh, but I didn't realize that it was for everyone. And I think that the enemy was kind of playing with me. He didn't want me to have this gift either. So he was telling me I'm one of those who uh, God has chosen not to give this gift to. Well, that wasn't the case. Uh, that was just him lying. And so I, uh, I, I'm glad I trusted these individuals. So I went back and uh, continued to seek. They just encouraged me to seek. And I remember that I, I would take some time during the day before I'd go to work, usually around uh, 11 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock in uh, noontime. And I'd, I'd go to my room and uh, I was still living at my parents, but I had my own room. And I would go and I would just seek God. I'd read the Bible, I would pray. I was desiring to have everything that God wanted me to have, but especially this thing called the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I can remember one day, one day where I, I, I think I felt God's presence and, and I was hungering for this and, and actually tears started to come down my face. And I thought, okay, here it is, here it is, here it is. I got tears. But I didn't get tongues and was disappointed again and wondered what could be wrong with me. God is gracious and loving and I saw it again and I saw it again. And then one day I was up in my room frustrated and had read some scripture, some scripture probably about the Holy Spirit. And I said, God, I, I want this. If it's for me, I want it. If you have a good gift for me, I want it. God, baptize me in your Holy Spirit. I waited. I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel a thing. But I decided to take a chance and just to open my mouth. And I spoke a couple of, I'll call them syllables, that weren't in English. And I thought, what was, is that something? I did it again, and I spoke a couple of more syllables. I thought, really? Nah, I'm making that up. So I prayed in English, and then I tried again, and, and there it was again. I was speaking these words, and this time, instead of stopping, I let it go for a little bit. So maybe I spoke a sentence or two or three. It definitely didn't sound like something I was making up. It certainly wasn't English, but where were the waves? Where were the waves of the Spirit? Where were the waves of, of, of tears? Where was the power of God coming upon me? And I'll tell you, my, um, my thought was this, and I might have even said it out loud, that's it? Because all the stories I had heard before were of powerful encounters, Feelings of, of, of waves of the Spirit, feelings of liquid love, tears, uh, and excitement, this, this almost this compulsion to speak in tongues. Every encounter I had ever heard about was a powerful encounter with God, and mine was, that's it? But I prayed again, and I thought, I wonder. I mean, I don't think I'm making this up. So I made a phone call. I called one of the individuals from the group that I was, was part of. I said, I, I think I spoke in tongues today. They said, really? Oh, that's so exciting, Rick. What happened? I said, well, that's just it. I was up in my room, and I was asking God for this thing called the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and I stammered a couple of words, but I didn't feel anything. I just, I just kind of spoke, and, and I don't know, is that it? And they said, well, it, it, it could be. You know, you don't have to have a powerful experience with the Holy Spirit. I thought, well, I had never heard that before. And then they asked me to do something which I thought was really uncomfortable. He said, well, why don't you do it right now over the phone? You want me to, like, pray in tongues over the phone? And yeah, yeah, you can do that. So I tried, and I was really, really self-conscious about it. They said, no, just, just go ahead. You can pray just quietly. And so I went ahead and started to speak those things 
that, and that, that, that I had spoken earlier and, and let it come. And I spoke a couple of sentences and they said, oh, Rick, yes, that's it. You're speaking in tongues. I said, really? That's it? He said, yes, it's it. I said, well, where are the feelings? He said, please understand, it's not about the feelings. It's about now you have a prayer language. And God is going to be able to use that prayer language. You're going to be able to pray in the Spirit in ways that you have never prayed before. Just keep using this. Just keep using it. Well, uh, there's probably more to how I developed in my prayer language, but that's one of the things I did. I just kept using it. And it the more I used it, the more comfortable it felt. The more I used it, the more that the language seemed to develop. It was almost like I was learning a language. Did I ever understand what I was praying? No. No. There was, there's been rare occasions where I felt that God gave me an interpretation. Most of the time, I'm just praying. Because God says, he who prays in the, spirit, in the Spirit, he who prays in the Spirit, this is in Corinthians, he who prays in the Spirit edifies himself. And that I was feeling. I was feeling built up. As I would do this, I was excited about being able to pray in the Spirit. It also says that those who pray in tongues pray uh, directly to God. The Spirit prays, but the mind is unfruitful. And we can pray for things uh, without our mind getting in the way. It's more like praying perfect prayers. And so I kept using this. Well, I just want to say, folks, I've been now praying in the Spirit for over 40 years. Uh, pretty much almost every day. I prayed this morning in the Spirit. Uh, if I don't pray every day, I do every week. And yes, certainly there were times where I began to doubt this whole thing. About six weeks after receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I went through a real period of doubt like I was making it all up. The enemy was just trying to rob me of this gift. Luckily, I was in a small group and they helped me to walk through this time. And what I found out was, no, this is real and I pushed on through and that hasn't been a problem since. But I've been praying in the Spirit. I've been building myself up by praying in the Spirit. I've been praying for needs, praying in the Holy Spirit. Your prayer language in tongues, first of all, is the initial physical evidence that you've received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. For six weeks after I got saved, it took about six weeks before I finally received the baptism in the Holy Spirit and spoke in other tongues. For six weeks, I had been seeking this thing. But on the day that I released speaking in tongues, released my prayer language, that's the day I knew. It is the initial evidence, the initial physical evidence that you have received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Just keep seeking it. Just keep seeking it. And you will know when you've received it when you have released your prayer language in tongues. But don't stop then just knowing that you've received it. Use that prayer language on a regular basis. Use it to edify yourself, to build yourself up. Use it to pray for needs. Use that miraculous, supernatural ability to pray in another tongue. If you've been seeking the baptism in the Holy Spirit for a while, don't stop. Every good and perfect gift comes from our Father, from the Father of lights, and He gives good gifts to His children. Luke's Gospel says if you are as fathers and mothers, being sinful, being evil is what he said. Know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more does the Father, the Heavenly Father, wish to give good gifts to his children, you and I? And then Jesus specifically says he wants to give the Holy Spirit to his children. It's a good gift God has for you. I hope my story may have helped someone today. If you've been frustrated, I've been frustrated. If you think it might not be for you, that's what I thought too. It is for you. It was for me. If you need someone to talk to more about this, find some other believers. Talk to them. Have them pray with you. Have them pray over you. You may be one who will receive better with people surrounding you. I was one who received by myself. Don't worry about where you receive. Just keep seeking God until you finally break through. If you need to visit with me or would like for me to uh, visit with you, to share with you personally, to pray over you personally, catch me after a service on Sunday morning and I will pray individually for you, encourage you. I might even have some suggestions as to how to release your prayer language. I desire for you everything that God desires for you. He desires for you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. He desires for you to speak in other tongues. He desires that for you because it is a good gift. It will transform your life. It will transform your prayer life. It will help you to be built up in the things of God. That's why I 
preach on this. That's why I share my own personal story. In the next several weeks, I'm going to have other people share their stories about how they received the infilling or the baptism in the Holy Spirit, because not everybody receives the same. In fact, everybody seems to have their own unique encounter with God, the Holy Spirit, and being baptized in the Holy Spirit. God has designed it that way, and it is okay. If your experience doesn't align with mine, that's okay. If your experience doesn't align with someone else, that's okay. But just be seeking the gift of God. It's not the experience that we seek. We're seeking the gift of God. We're speaking the Holy Spirit. We're seeking being immersed into, plunged into God the Holy Spirit. That actually helped me when I stopped seeking the experience like other people received, then I was able to receive in the way that was right and best for me, even though my response was, that's it. Yeah, it was it. And man, it's awesome. But at that point, it was like, I've been working so hard and this is it. Yeah. God has a gift for you. Seek his gift. Seek to be immersed in, baptized in, submerged in, plunged in, whatever word you want to use for immersion, the Holy Spirit of God, and see what he will do for you. I love you. I love you, church family and others who might be listening. God loves you. God has a good gift for you. I'm just going to close by just praying, Father, for the, the man or the woman, the teenager, the senior adult who is hearing my words and something inside of them is stirring that they want this. May they seek until they finally find. May they seek until they finally receive that which you have for them, this wonderful gift, the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. May there be a revival of Holy Spirit baptism and speaking in other tongues in this community, within this state, and within this nation. Come Holy Spirit in power as people seek you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Love your church family. And uh, be looking for more Holy Spirit stories in the weeks to come.